city services, for increased money for the police department, for schools, etc. without raising taxes more than they already are. The, the question is, city sales taxes are high enough. How do you propose, as a candidate, to pay for increased city services, such as police, schools, streets, etc., without raising taxes more than they already are? Truthfully, I don't know what percentage of our taxes go to the police, go to the fire. I know one percent goes to schools because that's what everybody's harping on. As far as what I'm gonna do, I don't know. A collective bargain agreement, I reckon. There's five of us. I can't do anything. I can take the words that people tell us, what we're, information we get, and together five of us can run the city. As far as the taxes, part of it goes to the state, city, schools, county. I don't know the percentages. I'm not privy to what the council is privy to now. I don't know. I know Stephen, Mike, and Greg, and them can tell you what we've done in the past. I don't have that knowledge. I haven't been in the pre meetings or the board meetings or anything like that. But I do know I got enough common sense that if you're going to spend money, you got to make money. And if it requires that you do have to go up, I'm not totally against it, but I'm not totally for it. It would have to come from somewhere. You know, it's like you have to make money to spend money, you have to spend money to make money. As far as, far as the uh, retail, the retail business taxes, the money off the retail, where does it go? Tagging onto that. It's like me telling you what you do with your money, not knowing how much you've got in your bank account. If I went through this audience tonight and said, you're going to buy this kind of car, and you're going to buy this kind of car, and you're going to buy that kind of house, and I don't know what your resources are, what an idiot I am to sit up here and tell you what I would do with the retail wholesale. Now, I've already told you, and I've demonstrated over the years, I support police, fire, school. How stupid we'd be not to say that. But I do. And I would sit with, just like when I went to the state, when I was appointed to the state board, I had to find out where the money was. We had $50 million facility to build. Where's that money coming from? How much is federal? How much is state? I couldn't say we're going to build this until I knew how much resources we had. I can't say how much we're going to pay uh, per diem on the veterans' home that we've got out there, the nursing home, because i got to know how much money we got. All of us have to know what our balance in our account is before we start saying we're going to put X number of dollars into one, one program. So that's uh, for those of us that are not on the council, like Stephen that has these numbers, it's uh, impossible for me to tell you now what I would do with it, do it better. I can just tell you that we've got a great fire department, we've got a great police department, and we've got a great uh, maintenance department. They just, sometimes they just need a little nudge. How much? That would depend on what we got in there. That's called a budget. And uh, that's where you, you will hire us to make sure we do the right thing. Before answering that question, I think it's important for us to all know where our city is financially. Currently, our city has over $83 million of unreserved funds in the bank. We have a total of over $114 million in the bank. We have the second highest bond rating of any city in the entire state of Alabama. That's second only to Huntsville. Now with that being said, it's up to you to elect responsible managers of those funds. And I've got to tell you this. Um, I'm not a fan of taxes. I did not vote for the last tax that came up, and before voting for any tax in the future, uh, I think a city should first try to tighten its belt and do that before raising taxes on anyone. No government. Thank you. 
No government with $100 million in the bank and the second highest battle rate in the state of Alabama should be raising taxes. I agree with what Stephen says. Uh, I understand we have a 2A bond rating right now. If we lose our taxes, what I've been told, basically overnight we would drop to a 1A status. You look at other cities in Alabama that's dropped their taxes and see how good they're doing. Yeah, you don't got to call no names out, but there's very evidence. West of us, south of us, schools are getting took over by the state. It takes money to run a city. Uh, I'm not for tax raising, I never have been, but if we want to continue to have the best police departments, the best fire departments, we want to have these satellite services everywhere, it takes money to do that. I understand that. But I am not for just going out and raising taxes to make sure we get that. We use our money, we check and balance on everything we do, and we continue to grow as a city. Thank you. I for, I for one am not one that believes that you can tax yourself into prosperity. I think what we can do, and, and no, I will not look at, even look at raising tax. The first thing we have to look, look at is our efficiency. Are we efficient in what we do and in the way we do it? How many city vehicles do you see driving around town and trying to figure out why are they why are they in it? Why are they at home? Why are they parked in a hotel? Why am I paying? Why are you paying the gas for that person to drive that vehicle home? Those are the kind of thing, kind of efficiencies that we have to have. Yes, there are department heads that there are some department heads, such as the street department, that need a person to drive their vehicle home. I have no problem with the police department driving their vehicles home. I have no problem with the fire department driving their vehicles home. But there are some, and I'm not going to name them because you know them and you see them every day. Why do they drive their vehicle home and why have we been paying their, their gas and their vehicle insurance for 20 and 25 years? I think before we even look to raise taxes, we have to make sure we're so, ourselves are efficient. Are we hiring the right people? Are we hiring capable people? Are we hiring two people to do a one-person job? Before we even think to even think of raising taxes, we need to look at our own self. What are we doing wrong, and what can we do better? You've had some comments saying that you weren't privy to financial information. That's absolutely not true. I have a copy of the Oxford 2012 budget in my truck right now to carry to work with me every day. You are privy to that. If you want the information, you can find it. I've attended over half of the council meetings in the last year. I also go to the pre-meetings where all the work is actually done. I know the Oxford has a $34 million budget this year. I know that if expenditures remain the same, income remains the same, they'll have $850,000 left to add to the general fund. Stephen says there's $83 million there of uncommitted funds. If, the, if there was never a penny taken in Oxford for the next two and a half years, we can run Oxford at the same level for two and a half years without even running out of money. So we need to spend the money where it is, where it's needed, but spend it wisely. And I ask you to uh, consider me that I've taken enough interest to see what's going on in our city and know the financial situation. I'm not privy to every line item on there, but if you ask me, I can find it. I know what goes into that line item. I know that we spend $24,000 a year on insecticide for the fogger that comes around in your neighborhood and sprays your mosquitoes. So I am interested in what goes on in Oxford in a financial way. Thank you. we need to do is go in as a council, as a new council, and inventory what we have, and look at the uh, number of workers that we have doing particular jobs. You know, I think as a good manager of any business, and I do have a business downtown, uh, you've got to, when, you, when someone comes in there and buys a $10 item, 
and I, and I say, okay, it's $11. You know, they look at you like, are your taxes that high? I have people who come from, um, I have an antique store, so they come from other states. And they look at that, I think it's, it makes me start to think about how are we spending all of that tax money. So, it, so to me, the first thing we need to do is inventory, be more efficient, as Greg says, with what we have and use it wisely. Uh, another thing I think we have to do is bring more commerce in, bring more industry in, so that we have more people contributing at the higher rate of pay to that tax base. So I think those are some things that would be an answer to no more taxes. No, I don't want to look at anybody with my register and it's 11 cents tax, for sure. I'd love to change back to 8 cents tax, but I, but I, you know, I know we have to have some things, but I believe we can do better, and I want to be a part of that for place two. Thank you. Uh, every year I was on the council, we had a surplus. Several, sometimes it was several million dollars. So we need more people coming into Oxford to spend money in Oxford. One of the things we proposed was building a sports complex. A sports complex for you, those of you that don't know, if you have soccer, baseball, and travel, softball, that goes on all the time. We did a study on that, and that complex has not been built yet. But it would have over a $5 million economic impact per uh, weekend, I mean per year, excuse me, per year on our city. So if you bring it in $5 million, another extra $5 million a year for people outside of your city, that's another source of revenue. So we need to get that sports complex built so we can bring in that, that revenue through the sports complex. Also our schools are the best marketing tool we can have. The better our school system is, we promote our school system. It's going to bring in more industry. So as, as Greg, I think, mentioned that there was a Dr. Moody brought in a company. They located here because of our school system. We need to increase the people coming to Oxford to increase the revenue, to increase the sales tax, and that's how we'll fund our programs and our services for the next several years. Thank you. Yeah, the sales tax, uh, you know, I've, I've ran into several uh, elderly people that uh, out campaigning and uh, one question that's come up is, uh, you know, about the sales tax. And, uh, you know, you, we've got 10% sales tax and, uh, you know, a lady said, you know, uh, she was going to try to buy a, uh, uh, a lawnmower and uh, it, was, it was about seven, eight hundred dollars and uh, so you know somebody's on a fixed income it's, it's very hard to, uh, uh, to pay for, uh, for such as uh, that amount of money. And so, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm actually for uh, a new development coming into Oxford to, uh, to help uh, bring in the industry here so we can have more paying jobs. Uh, there's uh, people working two or three jobs just to make some ends meet. Uh, I believe I can bring this to the table. I believe I can work with the city council and the mayor uh, to bring in more industry in the city of Oxford. Uh, give me an opportunity uh, for place five and uh, uh, there's a lot of things that we can talk about sales tax. Uh, I will be, uh, would, would help with the city council and I will be helping the mayor uh, for uh, helping the citizens here. It's all about the citizens. So if I'm given an opportunity here to, uh, uh, to be elected, I will work hard to bring the industry in here and also our uh, education. Thank you. I think, like Mike said, it's important that we bring more industry in, where you have more people who can afford to spend more money in our stores to bring in more revenue. I think if you give people an opportunity to, uh, an opportunity for a better job, they're going to they're going to go for it, and they're and they're going to train for these jobs. We have the trade schools and vocational schools where they can train for them, and we have and we have the education system that will support it. And I, I think we need to uh, 
spend, uh, spend our money more wisely, like someone else said. And uh, as I said, bring in more industry where people can afford to, uh, to shop in our stores and to spend more. Right now, people are probably spending just what they have to spend just to get by, just to pay their bills and buy groceries and uh, just have what they need.